Hey, this is Corey from Wolfpack Woodcraft. In today's video, we're gonna do a quick review of my Passables pouch. Uh, I was just going to do the pouch itself, but I think you're gonna to wanna to see everything that's inside. So I'm gonna go through that as well. I'm going to leave links to everything in the description box down below. The affiliate links are going to be the Amazon links. Those really help out the channel. You don't have to buy what I link to, you can buy whatever you want. I still get credit and it really is helpful. I'm also going to leave a link to the Hidden Woodsman. That is not a sponsored link, affiliate link. I have no relationship with Malcolm or the Hidden Woodsman. But I really enjoy this Possible's pouch. I really enjoy his products. And so I want to help him out the best I can. And so if you want this color, you're going to have to use Amazon because he has special colors for Amazon. And then if you go to his website, there's a lot of other colors that you can choose from as well. And this Possible's pouch I've had for years. If you've been following the channel, Every single one of my gear loadout videos, this has been on there. Every single one of my trip videos, this has gone with me. Every day hike, every time I went anywhere, this thing has been with me. And when I first started, I had stuff in here that was like in case of an emergency stuff. So this lived on the bottom of my backpack and I knew that if I was ever in a situation where I needed something, I could pull this out and it would be in here. But then as time went on, I started putting like little things in here, like my sharpening stone and my rusty racers in here so that I wouldn't forget them and I wouldn't lose them. And now it has a bunch of stuff in it. And this isn't something that lives on the bottom of my pack. It actually lives on the top of my pack because everything I need is inside of here. And I like that. I like how small compact it is. I like how the handle's on top so that I can fit this down in the sleeve or the side of my pack. I can easily pull it out and get to it. Uh, I actually have two of these pouches. I have one, that's my Possible's pouch, and then I use one for my hygiene kit. And they store a lot of stuff. You're gonna be surprised everything I pull out of here. Uh, but I really, really like the Hidden Woodsman and I really like these pouches specifically. So getting into the inside, first things first is I have an Enright cloth. This cloth is used for me and me only. Uh, I don't use this for dishes. I don't use this for drying off my tent or my tarp. I use this to wipe sweat off my face. I use it to wipe my hands off. I use this for me and me only. I'll blow my nose with it sometimes. And then I can unhook the cloth from the bag, wash it in the river, in the lake, in the whatever, and then hook it back up. I like it because it has a carabiner on it. And so if I go and I wash this at the river and it's soaking wet, I can hook it on the outside of my pack and it's not getting everything wet on the inside. And so it's just a really nice little rag that I use for a lot of different things. I, again, sweat, tears, uh, with my son. But uh, whatever, whatever needs to be done, this is for human use only. I don't use this for anything else. I like it a lot. Again, links in the description box. Uh, here we have the Thermarest Neo Air pump. So this opens up, this little rubber thing comes out, and then when the lid opens completely, it blows air into your sleeping pad. So this is how I blow up my X-Therm. This is how I blow up all my sleeping pads, to be honest with you. Even if it doesn't have the right fitting, I just set it next to the opening and let this blow it up. And I just, I like it better. I don't like blowing into my sleeping pads. I don't like the moisture from my breath getting into there. I don't like taking the time to do it. I like to just set this, forget about it, come back later, close it up. Or I'll, most of the time I will use this to blow it up and then I'll get my pillow and my sleeping bag ready. And then by the time I have my sleeping bag and my pillow all ready, this is already inflated my sleeping pad. And so I like that a lot. A lot of people use this for winter because it's, you're not blowing that moisture into your sleeping pad because the moisture will freeze and whatnot. The problem is, is it runs on two AAA batteries and those batteries die very quickly in the winter. And so you're gonna wanna keep this on your person or you're gonna wanna keep this warm with your body heat, so in a pocket or something. Uh, or you're gonna have to take the batteries out and then store the batteries on you. So keep that in mind. 
Uh, it is a good thing for winter. It does keep your sleeping pad dry, but you're gonna have to protect those batteries if you're gonna wanna use it. Uh, next I have purple paracord. The reason it's purple is because I don't like using purple paracord. Uh, if you've watched my videos, you've seen black paracord, camouflage paracord, uh, green and black paracord. I've had a lot of different colors in here, and the problem is, is I steal it all the time. Uh, because it's in here, I know where it is, I can easily get to it, and so I use it for other things. And then when I go to go camping or I go to do something, my paracord's not in here anymore. So the purple, I don't use. The purple, I don't like using on things, and so it's a color that will stay in here. I'm not gonna steal it for anything, you know what I mean? So purple paracord, just so that I quit stealing the cordage out of my possible pouch. Uh, next I have tent stakes. So I use the Tokes Titanium Shepherd Hook tent stakes. I like these a lot. Now they come in a pack of six. So I bought two packs of six and I have all 12 in this one bag and it is very, very light. Titanium is extremely light. The shepherd hooks are extremely light. The reason that I have 12 is because my tent can, well, I have each corner, which is four. I have my vestibules, which is another two. And then I have my sides, which is another two. So that's eight. I can also reinforce the four corners because there's a tie out on the top. So that's another four, which will give me 12. And so I can really stake down my tent with tw all 12 of these tent stakes. And so that's why I have 12, is so that if a storm were to come, if some stream winds were to pick up, I can stake it down and these work really well. And they're so small and light that I don't mind carrying a bunch of them. Uh, so with that, the other pouch, so this is would be the other six, but in here I keep my sporks. And so I have a Yuko spoon fork. This is the Yuko switch. I did sand down the knife. It has a serrated knife on it for cutting. I sanded the serrations off. It makes it more comfortable to eat it with the spoon itself. And it's also really good for butter and peanut butter and spreading on bread. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to do that. It's not the easiest with a really sharp knife. It wasn't the easiest with those serrations, but now that it's smooth, I really like using this as a butter knife. And then it clicks together, and then you have a long-handled spoon or a long-handled fork. And this is my go-to eating utensil. This is the one that I use all the time. If I'm eating a mountain house, if I'm eating anything, this is the one that I use because again, it's so easy to put together. It's so easy to clean. It's really, it's really a nice system. Uh, the other one that I carry with me all the time is a Tokes Titanium Spoon and Fork. And what makes this one special is I can put this on here and then I have tongs. And so if you know me, I like to cook with tongs. I used to carry tongs and eating utensils. But with this, I combine the two. So if I'm cooking steak or chicken or noodles or something, I cook with this system here and then I can eat with it as well. And so I like that I'm not dirtying a bunch of different dishes. I'm dirtying this as I'm cooking and then I use it to eat as well. And so I really like this system. This is probably my favorite cooking tool that I have with me. So usually this is for cooking and eating. This is just for eating. If I have like a mountain house or ramen noodles or something, I usually use the Yuko. If I have company, if Caroline's with me, I share these as well. Uh, next, I have rust erasers. These work really, really well. If you have a little bit of surface rust, if you have pitting, if there's something on your knives that's not supposed to be on your knives, these will get it off. There's a medium grit and a fine grit. I start with the medium grit and then I polish it up with the fine grit. Sometimes I will strop my knives with the erasers. Uh, I really like these a lot. Uh, Falkneven DC4 is my favorite sharpening stone. It's got an 800 grit, 1000 grit. I sharpen everything with this. Uh, my old one I keep by the computer. I got it here. 
So this one, the 800 side is completely smooth. There's no grit left on it because I've used it so much. Then there's a couple nicks on the corners of the 1000 grit side. So I bought a new one. The new one stays in my possibles pouch because if I need a sharp knife, if I need everything to be as sharp as possible, it's going to be while I'm out at camp or out in the woods. It's not gonna be while I'm sitting at home. And so this one stays by my computer. I only use the 1000 grit side and I just touch up my knives as I'm watching YouTube or uh, waiting for my videos to upload. I'll touch up some knives. But yeah, DC4, great sharpening stone. Uh, duct tape, it's actually Gorilla Tape. It's not much to say about that. This is a F-O-H-O-Z stove. So it's a BRS stove, it's like a copy of a BRS stove. It's just a couple bucks cheaper. And this I carry with me all the time. Uh, I really like having the ability to cook on a stove. Sometimes I choose an alcohol stove or a wood burning stove or some other kind of cook system. I still carry this with me. It just lives inside my possibles pouch. So if I plan on using it, I just bring a canister. And if I don't have a canister, then this is just wasted weight. But because it's so small, compact, it really isn't wasted weight. It's just in my pouch and so it just lives in there and I like this a lot I use this for my pots my pans my titanium my stainless steel it's a really great little stove and I use it all the time uh, next I have pocket farkle this is a good two-player game if you're sitting around board pull out farkle and it's dice there's a lot of games that you can play with dice uh, I have cards playing cards this is the survival tips cards, but I just stole it for its case. Inside I have conflicted cards. And the reason I like the conflicted cards is because I can play two player games, I can play solitaire, or I can just read the cards. And so this one is, uh, is the world too far gone that nothing but a complete collapse will bring forth real change? Why, what would that change be? So it gets you thinking outside the box. It gets you thinking about preparedness and getting your preps ready and things like survival situations and what you would do and what are the most important things to have on you. And it just gets you thinking in different light. And so I really like these as well. Again, it's just a way to maximize my space. I have playing cards. So I have multiple player games. I have single player games and I have stuff to read all in this one small package. Uh, next is my real compass. This is a Santo MC2. This again is paracord that I stole out of the possibles pouch to make this so I can go around my neck. It's got the mirror. It's got the I can change the declination. It's got a magnifying glass. Has the rotating bezel. Has everything I need to use for a compass. Uh, I can find my way anywhere with this. And then I also have a whistle, and the whistle has a compass on it. It has a magnifying glass. It has a thermometer, but the secondary compass I like because when you're actually lost, when you actually don't know where you are, it, your mind starts playing tricks on you. You start to second guess your compass, especially when you're somewhere and you think that you're a lot closer than you are and so you've been walking for a long time following your compass and then all of a sudden you're all I should be at that road by now or I should be here by now and then your mind starts playing tricks on you thinking that your compass is off or your compass is wrong or your bearings were wrong and so having a second compass that I can look and say all right they both are pointing the exact same way they are working correctly I just need to calm down and keep going east or west or whatever direction that I need to be going uh, and so I like having two compasses the other thing that plays tricks on you is you'll recognize something not because you actually recognize it but because you want to recognize something and so you'll see a tree with moss on it and like oh I know that tree I know where I'm at and you have no, you've never seen that tree in your entire life. You have no clue where you're at, but your mind is just playing tricks on you. And so I like having, I always have a escape route, 
And so I'll pick like a road or a river or a town or something that is a single direction. And so I have to head west. No matter where I'm at in these woods, if I head west, there's a busy highway. And if I just keep walking west, regardless where I am on the in the woods, if I keep heading west, I will eventually hit that highway and then I can figure out where I need to go once I get to that highway. And so I always carry compasses and I try to carry both of these. And I have a crooked awl. Honestly, I'd never use this. This is just something that lives in my possibles pouch and I never ever use it. It's for poking holes in leather. It's for poking holes in birch bark and different things. Uh, it's for poking holes if I'm gonna sew something up. I can poke holes in it first to make it easier, but I never use it. And then last but not least is a battery charger. This is an Olight magnetic charger. You put one magnet on one side of the battery, another one, the other magnet on the other side, and then you can charge AA, AAA, 18650s, all the batteries. And uh, yeah, I like it because it's small, compact, fits in my possibles pouch. I forget that it's in there. The only negative about it is it only charges one battery. So like my pump takes two AAAs, uh, some of my headlamps take three AAAs, and so it sucks kind of charging one at a time to get your headlamp or your pump to work again. And so I wish I had something that charged multiple batteries at the same time, but this works, right? Especially if with my flashlights, most of my flashlights that I carry with me either use one AA or one 18650. So no matter what, I'll always have light. I can always charge my one battery for my flashlight and have light and I can always use my mouth. I don't have to use a pump. I can blow everything up manually with either blowing into it or using a bag. And so it works. I like this a lot. And that's everything. And so that's a lot of stuff that I carry inside this pouch. That's the one thing that I like about it is it's so small and it doesn't seem like you can fit a lot in it. But it fits a ton of stuff. And it's easy to get to everything. If I need my compass, I just grab my compass. I don't have to pull everything out and then get my compass out. I don't have to pull everything out and then put my compass back in. I can just... I can easily get to everything inside my possibles pouch. And so again, I'll leave links down below and hopefully you enjoyed this video. I plan to do a bunch more going over different kits, different gear, and just kind of showing you a quick review, a quick walkthrough of why I carry, why it's important, and try to get you thinking about different things to carry as well. So with that being said, leave any knowledge or questions in that comment section. Is there anything I should take out of my possibles pouch? Is there anything I should add to my possibles pouch? Let me know in that comment section down below, and I can't wait to see you on my next video.